Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about network address translation. So we know that every computer which is on the network, they need to have a unique IP address so that we can identify them or we can locate them. And IPv4 actually gave us a way to assign different IP addresses to these all different computers. And in IPv4 by using 32 bits, we can have these many, for example, 4 billion different IP addresses which we can assign to different computers. But in 1990s, it was realized that these many IP addresses are not sufficient for all the computers around the world so that we can assign IP addresses to each one. So different tricks are different techniques were introduced, introduced and network address translation is one of them. And this is based on the idea of public and private IP addresses. So in the IPv4, for example, we have uh, public IP addresses and those IP addresses are basically global IP addresses which can be routed on the internet. And then we have private IP addresses which are just the local IP address and they are not routed on the internet. So in this case, idea was that the different organizations, for example, this organization, organization one, this organization can use the private, organi uh, private IP address within its boundary. And in the same way, for example, this organization can use the same private IP address and this organization can also use the same private IP address. So it means they can use the IP addresses repeatedly as long as they are within their own organization. It means they are not sending anything out of their organization's network so they can just use this private IP address. And when they want to send something to the global internet or to the internet, then they need some of the public IP addresses. So in this case, they were only assigned the public IP addresses when they wanted to send something out of their organization's network. So at that point, this network address translation was used, for example, in this router at this point, this network address translation can use and can be used. And the job of this net is to translate the private IP addresses to the public IP addresses. So the job of net is to translate private IP addresses to the public IP addresses. As an example, for example, this user, so this user is basically one, let's suppose this user, it has the private IP address. So this is also private IP address. So for example, this user is going to use this private IP address. So as long as this is within its own boundary, like within its own uh, organization's network, it is okay, they can communicate with each other. But as soon as they want to send something to the global internet, then they need a public IP address and for that we have this router and router will have a pool of IP addresses so when an IP address comes here this router can translate that IP address to the public one and now they can uh, that IP can be routed to the public networks or to the destination so this is the network address translation which is being done by this router now in addition to this uh, advantage the net uh, the network address translation has the advantage of security by hiding the internal IP addresses. So this provides security by hiding means, for example, now if you are using the uh, network address translation, then whatever IP address this organization is using within its own boundary, those IP addresses will not be visible to rest of the world. They don't know. So in this way, somehow they can protect their network by using this net terminology or uh, net technology. Now there is some relevant terminology. So for that, if we go through this one, so you see first one is the inside network. So this inside network is the part of the network whose addresses need translation. So you see on this part, we have this private organizations and these addresses actually need translation because these are the private IP addresses and when they want to send something to the global internet, then they need the translation. So this part is known as inside network and this part is known as outside network. So outside then inside network is outside network. And then we have idea of network address and also inside address, sorry, inside address and the outside address. 
So inside addresses are the address addresses of devices which need translation. So these are the addresses which need translation. So we call those addresses as inside addresses. And then the destination addresses, which are basically public IP addresses, we call them outside addresses. And then we also have the local addresses and global addresses. So local addresses are the addresses which are on the inside network and global addresses are the addresses which are on the outside network. So it means this will be the demarcation points. These are outside addresses and these are, oh sorry, these are uh, global addresses and these are local addresses and these are outside addresses and these are inside addresses. Now let's suppose that this is a network, inside network, some organizations network and these all addresses will be known as inside local addresses and on the right hand side for example we have global internet so some user is there and we are connected with this network using router and switches and now when this user on the private part of the inside network wants to send something then this will come to the router router will translate that private ip address into some public ip address for example this one and then that translated ip address is known as the uh, inside global address so when the packets from inside network with inside local address go to the global internet this IP address is translated and we call them global address. We call them inside global address like this one. Now let's suppose that this user has uh, typed in uh, or this user is requesting some information from the destination network whose IP address is this one. And this is for example this here. This is there. Now this IP address when we are in this inside part here, so this address will be known as outside local and when this packet with this source address and this destination address actually crosses this router then this IP address actually this is not mostly changed but source IP address is changed to the inside global and this outside local address is known as when it travels to the outside network this is known as outside global address so what happens for example in this if we if we focus on this this uh, user this user generated a source address and a destination address so the source address of this computer is inside local and the destination is outside local but when this crosses after translation this source will be known as inside local and the destination will be known as outside oh sorry inside global sorry this will be known as inside global and this will known as outside global so this is the demarcation point between both of them now there are three different types of network address translation one is a static network address translation then a dynamic net and the third one is PAT that is port address translation let's discuss them one by one in a static network address translation actually we need a public IP address for each private IP address so for what happens for example here we have three private IP addresses and at the router we need three public IP addresses for this translation so in this case there will be one to one mapping for example in this case we have three computers three private IP address and correspondingly we have three public IP address and we can assign uh, with one to one mapping simple so we have as many ip addresses as we have the uh, private ip addresses in the dynamic instead of this and yes in a static we configure them statically that this ip address will be used so this inside ip address will be used with this inside global ip address so we statically assign these ip address we manually do this thing but then we have the global one Oh, sorry we have the dynamic one so what happens in dynamic we assign this thing dynamically so what happens here the router will have a pool of IP addresses and when the request come from some of the user for example from this user and then router will look into the pool and it can assign the available IP address to the first one and in the same way if that second request comes the second will be assigned 
and so this will be on the first come first serve basis so this IP address will be assigned dynamically and then we have the last type that is a port address translation that is also known as net overload we can we see net overload and here this pet not only uses the IP address but it also uses the port numbers of the host from inside network for example this is inside network so we know that uh, the the communication also uses the at the transport layer they use the uh, UTP and TCP and they both use the port number so for example when a user generates some data to be sent to the destination they just use the port numbers for example uh, and so these port numbers and IP addresses are used to create a session between the uh, source and the destination and this way the port can actually map multiple private IP addresses to single public IP addresses. So this, and this is how we can actually save the IP addresses because maybe 1000 IP addresses can be mapped to a single IP address, a single public IP addresses. And theoretically, this is basically 2 raised to power 16 IP addresses. So for example, we can say 2 raised to power 16 different IP addresses can be assigned to or can be mapped to a single IP address. Now let's take example that how this is possible. So let's suppose that these two users are the, these two PCs are generating some data and in that data they have the header part and in the header part for example in this we have the source IP address and we have the destination IP address. So for the first computer this is the source IP address so that's 192.168.10.1 and this is the port number and this is the destination IP address which is the destination IP address of this computer on the right hand side. And the next computer is generating the packet having source IP address of its own that is this one. And the destination this is using for sorry the first one is reaching this computer and the second one is trying to reach this computer sorry. So in addition to IP address they have used the port number so with this packet they all send or both of the users send these packets to this router and this router has net um, function enabled there so router will translate this one so what will do router will generate the packet and now the router has to translate the private IP address to the public one so the router will have a maybe statically assigned or maybe dynamically but it will have some public IP addresses so here it the router is going to use the source IP address public that is public so this is going to use some IP address and that IP address you see that is same for both of the users you can notice this one so 200.321 this 200.321 but port number is different for both of the users and now in the destination it will use the same destination address which they these users wants to uh, reach and so why this translation now this router will forward that those packets to the individual destinations and then this information will be recorded in this net table so you see this PC1 has been assigned so this PC having this one has been assigned different uh, IP so you see this they are using the same IP address here so this they both are using the same one so this is important this is something important we should note same IP address but different ports now after this translation so router will forward this one and this information will be received by the destination and let's say when the destination has received that packet now the destinations have to send back something and so that they will generate the packets and in the header part now they will use in the source address part they will use their own IP address and in the destination they will use the address from where they receive the request they will use this IP address so both of the uh, destinations they will use the same IP address but the port numbers will be different so you can see the port numbers is different so this is not 80 sorry this, sorry yeah this is port numbers they are using different port numbers and then they can send this information to the router 
and now when the router receives that information where in the source this will have its own IP address and the destination it will have oh sorry in the source these addresses will be there in the destination the IP address of this router will be used and now this router has to decide that where to send this information so this router can see that the this port number so the first port number was for example for PC1 so this will send this information to the PC1 and maybe this port was for the PC2 so now it will change the IP addresses so it will change the IP address like this you can see this is the IP address for this one and the next one is IP address for this one so in this way now this router can forward the information to the actual transmitters Now sometimes the question arises that for example in our previous example we use different port numbers but for example both of our users are generating the same port number then what happens same port numbers so in this case what happens it can assign the same IP address to both one but problem will arise if the same port numbers are being used here so in this case the router can decide to assign different port numbers to the communication or to the session of both of the users in this case maybe one port number for this user and maybe two port numbers for this not one two but say router knows that i have assigned a different port numbers to this uh, to the session of first user and different uh, port number to the session of the second user so in this case they can the router can send this information to the destination and they from destination by using the same by using the sorry these respective port numbers information will be received and then by looking at this table the router can forward that information to the original uh, client who requested for this information so this was some introduction about the network address translation so we discussed static dynamic and pack and i hope this video was a bit helpful for you and uh, we will continue with, uh, with the Cisco Packet Tracer in the next video. And I hope this was a bit helpful for you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And hope to see you in uh, next video. Thank you.